Microphones and dancing often don't go that well together. <laughs> ballet is often associated with beauty, but ballet can just as easily be associated with pain. Because ballerinas spend $8,000 a year on these shoes that last three hours and cause hundreds of injuries. They buy 30 pairs a month of shoes essentially made of cardboard that cause permanent foot deformations. So I thought, let's do better. My name is Lena Colucci. I'm an engineer. I've been dancing since I was five. And when I was in high school, I started working to bring ballet shoes into the 21st century. The project had three main ingredients that made it successful. The first is that I was looking at an old problem in a new light. Ballet shoes have been the same for nearly 200 years. The second is that I worked with experts in a variety of disciplines. And by doing so, I was able to go from winning the MIT State Science Fair to being on the cover of an ergonomics journal, to learning from some of the best shoe design specialists in the world at Nike. And the third ingredient, which gave me the passion to keep going on this project for seven years, is that I was working on a problem that I experienced every day as a ballerina. By working on ballet shoes, which is an engineering problem that has a big impact, on the health of a ballerina, I became interested in innovating for healthcare in general. Now I'm a PhD student at a joint program where I go between engineering at MIT and medicine at Harvard Medical School. My program believes this type of training in both of these worlds is what future scientists need to effectively tackle today's medical challenges. I decided to pursue a PhD because I saw it as the best way to innovate in healthcare. And it is an effective option. But it's also a slow one that takes five to seven years in the United States. Is there a way we can accelerate medical innovation beyond requiring everyone to get a PhD? The answer is yes. I'm co-director of a group called MIT Hacking Medicine, and our mission is just that, to accelerate medical innovation. What if instead of the current model for innovation, where different players in the healthcare system make decisions independently, 
we put all of these people in the same room. We give them real medical challenges to work on, all the supplies they need, and lots of coffee. Yes, a lot of coffee. It turns out that this model is called the Health Hackathon, and a lot of great stuff comes from it. Health hackathons are these action-packed weekends where doctors get together with engineers, nurses, designers, students, and work on tackling real medical challenges in a short amount of time. I often wonder how much faster my ballet shoe project would have progressed if all the experts I worked with throughout the years had been in the same room for a weekend. Health hackathons are a spark that get unlikely players working together. And the teams often go beyond the one weekend to found startup companies, to license their ideas, and to otherwise have real, lasting, meaningful impact on the healthcare system. Health hackathons are a growing movement all over the world. And on behalf of MIT Hacking Medicine, I'm here today to invite you to join this movement because healthcare has never needed the ideas from each and every one of you as much as it does now. MIT Hacking Medicine hosted one of the largest health hackathons in the world earlier this year, where 500 people from five different countries and 16 US states gathered at the MIT Media Lab to work on tackling different medical challenges. And interestingly, The same three ingredients that I needed to develop 21st century ballet shoes, we now use at MIT Hacking Medicine to accelerate the transition into 21st century medicine. So today, I'm going to tell you three stories about how people went to a health hackathon and used these ingredients to have a real impact in the world. And these are just teams that I've personally met. There are countless more success stories all over the world. The first story is about a team that was able to innovate by looking at an old problem in a new light. PillPack reinvented the way people get their medication. They went from an idea at a hackathon to a company that was on Time Magazine's Best Inventions of the Year list. Statistically, One person out of everyone within arm's reach of you right now will take over five different medications. What if instead of having to juggle five different pill bottles, instead of having to pick all of them up at the pharmacy, instead of having to remember to order their refill, everything was just delivered to you in the mail, prepackaged, and labeled with the exact date and time that you should take it? This seems so obvious once you see it. Why hasn't it always been done this way? But it took a pharmacist, a designer, and an entrepreneur coming together at a health hackathon to develop the solution. PillPack has gotten nearly $13 million dollars in funding. They're shipping to customers in over 40 US states. And as I mentioned, they're in Time Magazine's best 25 inventions of the year list. PillPack shows us what can happen when people dare to ask, why is it done this way? The second story is about strangers from different disciplines meeting at a health hackathon and creating something to save countless infant lives. The story begins in Uganda, where I got the chance to travel to this summer and see this team in action. They're incredible. The team tackles a problem where millions of babies die every year due to breathing troubles after birth. Now, these deaths are easily preventable if a healthcare worker is trained to help the babies breathe using one of these devices. The problem is that training is difficult and expensive to implement. So two engineers came together with two doctors to tackle this problem at a health hackathon. The device they developed, called AIR, is an inexpensive add-on to existing resuscitators that gives the user immediate feedback on whether or not they're using it correctly. 
The Air Team won the hackathon, have since won grant money, completed field testing in Uganda, and although this device was developed for Uganda, American doctors have seen this device, and now they want it too. So the Air Team is preparing for FDA approval. Air shows us the incredible solutions that result when people come together across different disciplines, and in this case, across different country lines as well. The final story is about people feeling empowered to solve their own healthcare challenges. Breastfeeding is a nearly universal experience, but it can be a challenge to working moms. Breast pumps come to the rescue and allow working moms to feed their children with their own milk. But a group of moms came together and asked, why is a Prius quieter than a breast pump? <laughs> yes, indeed, breast pumps are loud, they're clunky, they have too many parts that are hard to clean. They're using the same old technology that's used to milk cows. Clearly not a user-centered design. That's why there was an entire hackathon devoted to making the breast pump not suck at the MIT Media Lab. The majority of participants were moms, moms brought their babies, and dads came too to help take care of the babies and innovate alongside the women. The winning team, Mighty Moms, developed a utility belt that makes pumping hands-free and discreet. The Mighty Moms team, half of whom are women who use breast pumps, will be going to Silicon Valley to pitch their idea to venture capitalists. That's what happens when people feel empowered to solve problems that they experience every day. So these three stories about the outcome of health hackathons show us that this model for accelerating medical innovation is working, and it's making a real difference in the world today. Other people are realizing this, too, because health hackathons are growing exponentially. There were three in 2010 and nearly 80 this past year. Health hackathons are happening everywhere. We at MIT Hacking Medicine get emails from organizations on every corner of the globe asking for help for how they can run their own events. And health hackathons are engaging everyone. It's not just hospitals and medical organizations who are interested in these events. We've partnered with Samsung, with G Intel, with the Clinton Foundation, with the Harvard Innovation Lab, and lots of other organizations who are realizing that we're on the edge of a medical revolution. One of the phrases I seem to hear most these days is that our healthcare system is broken. But this old system is finally undergoing upheaval. This next decade will be the one where new systems and standards are put in place for the future of medicine. And revolutions of entire industries don't happen very often, so we don't want to waste this chance. Even if, you've never, even if you have no medical experience, even if you've never thought about the healthcare system before, you have important skills and context to bring to the table. Remember, the stories you heard today were about engineers, designers, moms and dads who also never thought they'd be redesigning portions of the healthcare system. All of us have a stake in what the future of medicine looks like because all of us will interface with the medical system at some point in our lives. One of the best places for you to invent that future is at a medical hackathon. So I invite you to join the movement and let's all hack medicine. Thank you.